hey, what's up, friend? You are you interested in lack of skill? Yeah. Or maybe some suck. I'm just a new guy for the love of game. Wait, don't go. I know it's bad. Time to change. But not my man. Don't you know the games are my thing? Yeah. I know it's getting real late. Come on, look at me. I even do storytelling. Also, podcasts on great game subjects. Okay, yeah, I'm not a Markiplier or a PewDiePie. <laughs> but hey, that's what makes me so unique, right? 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 Welcome, everybody. It's the Nico Show. It's the Nico Show. Oh my god, we're back. I'm on schedule this time around because last time we did an episode, it was the weekend before. It feels good to be on a nice schedule again. Honestly, I'm just lying to you guys. This is probably gonna. <sighs> it's like once in a blue moon, apparently, that I could do this. Uh every week, which I would love to keep doing, I just don't do it because I'm a lazy piece of crap and I need to stop being lazy. But, you know what? That doesn't matter. The show must go on. We're already getting, we're already getting the videos out there, we're already doing the the podcast, making it happen, putting it on Spotify, putting it on YouTube, uh, even on Twitch. But, hey, last time we did, the previous episode wasn't on Twitch, okay? Uh, I decided to do it only on YouTube. And this right here isn't even in front of a live audience. I just, I'm treating it like one with the whole intro and this format. But guys, this one, if anybody's listening out there, this is not a live stream. This is me just recording a video. But that's okay. We, I, do, I tend to do that sometimes. It depends on what's going on in the stream world or world itself, but mainly on what I'm doing for streaming. Uh, if you must know exactly, uh, you know, I've been doing some Mass Effect streams with some friends. Not, not like every day or once a week type deal, but I've been doing that, uh, you know, every so often. And then I, last weekend was the Nico uh, stream. We did a Nico show with the great St. Wolven, uh, you know, first time ever you guys seen a special guest, uh, especially if you're on Spotify. Spotify ha- has never had a special guest podcast on there. Uh, although there was, a, there was a period where I couldn't pay for any of the podcasts to come out frequently. Uh, now I can for the time being. Uh, I had St. Wolven on for just talking about Mass Effect. But if you want to see any, but that, you know, I never made it to Spotify. But if you want to see it on YouTube, it's there, okay? It's it's not too far behind. I think it's like a month old at this point. But it was a great, great time. Or maybe it's older than that. Jeez, I think I'm lying to you guys again. So I do apologize. I am not a liar. Liar! Anakin, no. Liar! Anakin? Liar! Okay, well, you know, <laughs> the, the crazy guy has spoken. So guys... Like I said, this is not in front of a live audience. It doesn't, I mean, it doesn't matter, really, it, as long as I do the episodes, right? And today's episode is going to be a little bit different. It's actually going back to its roots. We're actually talking about different news articles this time around. And for the longest time, I've been talking about just subjects on gaming stuff. Uh, it hasn't been really anything news topical related. And we're going we're gonna to do it this time around. There's a bunch to talk about. And I'm, actually, I, I'm pretty excited to kind of go back to this format again. Um, I don't know why I got away from this format. I think I just wanted to make it more down-to-earth to you guys and not so, uh, how do I say, scripted. Because, you know, with these articles, we do read off of them just to give you the minute details. And then we kind of, you know, Nico gives his, uh, gives his opinion on it and maybe somebody will agree. And a lot of people, a lot of you will disagree, like on that... Uh, you know, that Mass Effect Not Worth It video. Ayo! Yeah, that was a great one, wasn't it, folks? Stop right there, criminal scum! Fox, get this guy off me! Uh, you know, I, I got a lot of that, but it was worth it. Because it's it was like the biggest video I've had in a very long time. The most comments! The most comments! I just got a comment that says definitely not worth it! That's right, folks! We can dance, boy. I gotta sneeze! Oh boy, it's coming! <laughs> oh my god, that comment made me sneeze. So that was great. I'm still getting comments from those videos that I recently released, especially the Not Worth It, talking about Mass Effect Legendary Edition. And, you know, before you 
shoot shoot the ship down where which I'm sailing. You gotta listen to the video. It's not just me blatantly saying it's not worth it. Period. It has a particular uh, like I don't know specificity to it. You know, it's, I don't know, on why I'm thinking that. But that, you know, I think I did that video maybe two weeks ago, three weeks ago now. Man, crazy. And now the Mass Effect Legendary Edition is coming out in May, so now we have a definite assurance of when that bad boy or bad girl, whatever the fuck you want to call it, is going to be coming out. Now, guys, like I said, this this episode of the Nico Show is going to be going back to its roots by reading different news article stuff. And I actually do miss that. It was good good times, good times. A lot of stuff to talk about. I, I from what I've found uh, on IGN, of course, of course. Oh goodness gracious me! What a yeah, what a great site. <laughs> oh man, we got big we got big stuff to talk about. And actually, there was just something that just popped in my head. I'm surprised I didn't find anything talking about it. It's a BlizzCon 2021, which is happening at the end of this week, which I'm super excited about for Diablo 4. Like I'm a huge Diablo fan. I'm not. You know, I'm a huge fan of it, but at the same time, it's it's a game to where I don't know, like, oh, all the builds, all the things to do, all, all the best runs, how to do this pro properly, how to be fast like this. You know, it's nothing like that, but I just really like Diablo. I always have. I grew up with that franchise ever since I was five years old, uh, shitting the bed when the butcher would come into my room and try to take advantage of me. Yeah, a little bit like that. Uh, I'm... Don't, don't look too far away. It never existed. It never existed. Oh, shoot. Fox, get this guy off me. I wish I said... I, no, you know what? This is getting too dark. <laughs> None of this stuff I just said is true, besides the BlizzCon stuff anyway. Okay, now, hear me out on this. We haven't done a personal Nico story in a while, or what's been going on in my life and what games I have been playing. We haven't been doing that lately. Uh, because of of a period of not having the time to do it. We had to be at 50 megabytes or less for these podcasts, which is like 30 to 40 minutes. Uh, now I can go for the hour, pretty much. You know, I can afford it. So let's let's talk about Nico's personal life. Still trying to get a second job. I think that hasn't changed yet. The economy is still a piece of crap. Uh, about two-thirds of the population in America is just out of jobs. And it's really hard these days to get just to do anything you want at, you know, the freedom we had before the whole pandemic hit. I hate to keep saying that, but it's true. You know, there's only so much, you know, we can do and jobs don't want to hire you. That's just how it goes. You know, we're back to this time and in, in, in the picky season of unemployment rates skyrocketing, like how it was uh, back in the early 2010s. It's gone back to that. Think a pandemic. Oh my god. It's insane how damaging it's become. But anyway, we're not trying to we're not trying to completely talk about that. I'm just saying like I'm the cause is the pandemic and the effect is what's going on. So I've just been applying at least, you know, at two two to three jobs every other day, you know, trying to get something. I'm, I'm like I'm not trying to be too picky, but I'm trying to find a job that's gonna help me sustain income like $15 an hour it's like that's all I'm asking folks it's just $15 an hour I mean holy crap why is that still treated like it's fucking $40 an hour like I'm not asking I'm not trying to buy a, a god dang Mercedes or something I'm just I'm just trying to pay rent god dang or you know I'm not trying to buy a Tesla I would love to but that's way too much freaking money you see those on the road nowadays people just cruising in those Tesla cars Oh my goodness, and when they drive by me, I just had to, I whip it out, and you know what, I think they understand why they don't like me. I think I understand why they don't like me too, yeah, that goes both ways, right? Yeah, it's just, uh, I don't know what I'm getting at here, but the point is, is that Tesla cars are really expensive, but they look really cool, although if you get like the base models for Tesla cars, they look kind of plain Jane, but you're still spending like 50k on it, or 30k. Yeah, you gotta spend like at least over 50k to get a decent looking Tesla, which is fucking ridiculous, by the way. It's absolutely fucking ridiculous. Stop right there, criminal stop. So, uh, yeah, that is the biggest thing. Um, st still playing piano, still playing music, still doing the Nico the Show podcast. Which, by the way, we have a special announcement for the Nico Show podcast at the end of this episode. F so for anybody who has made it even this far, and wants to wait till the very end of the show, I would much appreciate it. 
because there's a big announcement happening, a big change for the Nico show, at least platform-wise. Well, actually, no, not even platform-wise. You, I'll, I'll tell you guys at the end. Uh, I'm just, I just got to remember to remind myself to actually do it. Um, so here's a big thing happening in Nico's life besides looking for that second job, trying to get that income. Um, first job still the personal trainer stuff, of course, and that's not going so well. We're not getting traffic uh, really that well in the gym. No new members. They don't want to sign up for orientations for me or, you know, with me uh, because that's just how it goes. You need to have more traffic. The more traffic, the better chances you can get an orientation with somebody, which an orientation can lead to that person hiring you as to be their personal trainer. Uh, so I had four clients uh, last month and now I'm down to one this week. It's been a little, it's been rough, real rough. I lost more than half of my clients due to someone having an injury and another person going on vacation and then another one just being really, really, really finicky with their scheduling with me. Yeah, it's more like a, it's an instant, it's, it's, it's that occasion where they come to me, okay? I don't go to them this time around. So that kind of bites. <sighs> it really bites. But anyway, good news. Let's talk about some good news here. The Nico, okay, the Nico, the Nico the Legend, the title of, it's also the title of my book and everything else Nico related. <clears throat> but we're going to talk about my book real quick. I have started the third draft on the Nico the Legend novel or book or story. If you guys don't know what Nico the Legend is, it is this medieval fantasy story that I have created from scratch, heavily inspired by everything that I've seen throughout my life. Uh, movies, games, books, you name it. I have been just so just so taken away with my breath floating away, sail away, Enya, sail away, Enya. That's right. Nico the Legend is that compilation of all these great experiences that I've had into my own universe of medieval fantasy, and it's great. And guess what? It stars Nico, but it's not the same Nico that you know from, you know, from yours truly. This is a different Nico, a different beginning with a, hopefully, a different end. We'll see. But I have started my third revision. The reason why I've started my third draft because I can't afford to get a publisher, to get an editor, you know, a professional. I can't afford that hourly rate right now. I just can't do it. And we got done with the second draft this past August, and it just—it was just one of those things where it just hit my—it just hit me like when I woke up one day. Uh, this must have been like two weeks ago. Um, so two weeks behind on updating you guys, but that's okay. Two weeks behind, and like I said, I just woke up and bam, that shit hit me like lightning. Okay, it's fast as lightning. And I was like, you know what? I just, I, I should just do a third draft or a third revision. And guess what? We're on like chapter 15 right now and it's going fantastic. There's been new stuff that I have been altering, editing, not completely derailing the story or ruining the content or adding too much because I'm pretty satisfied on how it's going, you know, how it's been so far. But there has been some grammar stuff I've changed, you know, proofreading, and there's been some details I've, I've added to make it better, to make it more fleshed out, you know? This isn't like a George Lucas special edition Lord, uh, Star Wars thing, you know, where I'm just completely derailing what's canon and what's not. I mean, honestly, that stuff doesn't really matter too much when nobody's even read my book. But for me, it does matter because I'm the one, I'm in control of it. So you think. Eventually, the book takes over you. It's in control of you. It sucks you back in. And that's the, that's the fun part, though. I don't mind being sucked back into this world. I love this world that I create so far. So anyway, guys, I've been working. I, I've been streaming every other uh, day for the most part on doing um, uh, editing. I do it live on Twitch. So if you guys ever see me editing the Nikola Legend, that gives you a sneak preview. And if anybody else is listening on the podcast or finding this, I did a Nico the Legend podcast episode uh, at near the end of last year. So you guys are always welcome to check that out. It's about 40-something minutes long, you know, just talking about my, talking about my book and the, the journey it's been so far and so on. You know, you, if you want to get the 101, uh, that, those were one of the first episodes I started to put on Spotify, which is great. So you guys will easily be able to find that for sure. For the longest time, Nico Legend has only been on YouTube and then streaming through Twitch, but I love how it's on Libsyn. I love how it's on Spotify. It's fantastic. I love that my voice, it can be heard. Just audio. Just audio. That's it. Just freaking audio. It's super cool. It's super cool. So anyway, that's what's been going on with me. Now let's talk about, that's like the main lifestyle. So let's talk about games that I've been playing. I've been playing Yakuza Like a Dragon. 
Uh, fantastic turn-based Yakuza game. If it's a great spinoff, you know, don't have to worry of it ruining the storylines of Kiro, Kiro, Kiro. I think that's his name. Uh, with his original storyline, it has. Don't even worry about it, guys. It, it it's its own separate thing. Um, it's just got the Yakuza name on it, and there is Yakuza stuff that happens in it, but it's turn-based this time around, which is great. And there's a there's a dumpster outside my place right now, so uh, bear with me on that. So that game is a lot of fun. I recommend it. I love it. Uh, been, I think I'm about to hit 30 hours into it. Uh, World of Warcraft, I'm going to be canceling my subscription because I made it to max level. The expansion has been fantastic. Right now I'm just getting, the, you know, you can, pretty much there are four covenants at the end of the expansion that you kind of help throughout the, the latest expansion. And then by the end of it, you get to choose who you like the most. So I chose Maldraxxus as a undead, uh, Undead Death Knight, it's badass, he's a Frost build, and he is going to be on the Maldraxxus team, and I am just trying to get all the, the the build, so you get armor sets for, depending on which covenant you go to, but you have to, you still have to work for it, you have to do these campaign missions that give you the gear, so by the end of it, you look like a badass, so Maldraxxus definitely matched my character the best, but, um, I think after, I don't know, I think after this week, I don't know, shoot, I think, my subscription renewed and I forgot to cancel it. I'm going to have to take a break from it because I've been playing it pretty heavily and, uh, you know, I'm just, I'm Gucci. I'm just glad I first ever got a character to max level in World of Warcraft ever. And I, and I was one of the first people that played it on day one. And it's just been a hit or miss for me with World of Warcraft. It's always been a love hate relationship. I think it still is these days, but it's more, it's more the love side this time. World of Warcraft is a lot more enjoyable. Thank God. Um, uh, this is, this is interesting. This is a bit of a curveball. I've been playing White Knight Chronicles on the PS3. Yeah, the PS3. Going back in time. Uh, because it's been a series that I barely dabbled in back in the day when it first came out. But I remember really liking it. It was one of those things that's always been on the back of my mind when it comes to playing these old games or playing a game that I want to finish. And I'm trying to do that. And thank goodness that my roommate Deal has a PS3. So I'm borrowing his and I'm enjoying it. And I only play it on the weekends. Uh, that's all the time. That's, that's all the time I want to make for it. You know, it's my weekend type game, and it's been great. White Knight Chronicles was definitely a very ambitious title when it came out because it had great co-op mechanics, great town buildings, level five developer, the same guys who made Dragon Quest VIII, the same guys who made Rogue Galaxy, Dark Cloud one and two, the same guys who did the Nino Kune series. Okay, these guys. They, they're they pretty ambitious, and, and White Knight Chronicles was so great with all of its online compatibility and just co-op missions together, adventuring, making your own character, uh, and, you know, get to adventure with those made characters from other players, and then people coming to your town that you create and put together and buy stuff from you. It, it's just really cool. They always they always put town building in their games. It's just a thing that they've just always been good at doing. Like in Dark Cloud and in Nino Kune, you know, Nino Kuni, they brought it back, and uh, it's, it's nice to play. You know, despite it being an older game, I don't really give a crap. Now, this is the best part. This month has been RPG Mania Month for Twitch streaming, which is which means is that all I've been doing is every time I stream, I'm playing a different role playing game. And, and uh, well, Dark Souls Three is like the except uh, is the you know the special occasion, the the uh, you know the exception. You know, it's it, it's special because I'm playing with friends, pretty much. And uh, that's the only time I ever really, really ever stream. But every any other time, I'm, I'm streaming a different JRPG or role playing game, and it's been a lot of fun going through these old and new games. And uh, we're gonna continue that later tonight, or you know, at, tonight is, this is recording being done. You know, so that's pretty much what's been going on. I've been want, I've been looking at Neo Two. I've been wanting to play Neo 2 because Dark Souls 3 has been kind of consuming me. And my friends, you know, about to hit 100 hours in Dark Souls 3 on PC. And Neo 2 looks fantastic. Character customization looks awesome. And I've been wanting, I've been kind of jonesing for a Samurai Souls-like game. Kind of like how Sekiro was. But uh, I'd rather just play Neo 2 because I like to make my own character and have special builds behind all that. But that's besides the point. Uh, it's too expensive right now since Neo 2 Complete Edition came out and it's 50 bucks. I, I'm not buying that right now. Not for a while. Uh, believe it or not, I'm still playing Cyberpunk. I am about 100, about to hit 120 hours into that game. Almost done with the second playthrough. 
Uh, still enjoying the hell out of it, man. I, I, Cyberpunk first time around was really great, despite what's been going on with CD Projekt Red, source code being sold for ransom, stolen originally, and then everything else that goes with the Cyberpunk birthday cake. What a what a great gift. What a great celebration of a game that you guys spent so long making. And then this it just all fucking hit the fan. Like, shit hit the fan so hard that it looks like a sprinkler system just spewing out crap. Just spin, spin, spin. Instead of water, it's poop. Ugh. 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 Liar! Well, I'm trying not to lie. Got you, little freak. Okay, so that's it for that. That's that's all pretty much going on with Nico. We haven't done that in a while. Just thought I'd play catch up with you guys. So whoever's still sticking with me, I appreciate it. Appreciate it, appreciate it, appreciate it, guys. Uh, we got some pretty big stuff to talk about. Uh, no, nothing controversial or anything, but you know, this is fun stuff to talk about. And we'll see how far we can get. So our first one is talking about Valheim. Now this is a game that, for me, a lot of these times... See, this is what I don't understand. This is one of those games that pulled like an Among Us or Fortnite where they got so flippin' popular, so flippin' popular, or Apex Legends, you know, like those games are so popular that it's unbelievable on how popular they are. Yeah, that's right, I said that. This is a game that has just just popped into my feed one of these days and just being talked about, and then I, I've seen some people play it, and I'm like, what is this? And it always... It always boggles my mind because I'm usually on top of this stuff in terms of like, hey, what are some big games coming out? Hey, what's going on? You know, like I'm always in the scene. I mean, look, look what I'm doing right now. But for some reason, these big time online games like Among Us and Valheim and Fortnite, for some reason, I'm always late to the party on those types of games. I don't understand why. I like to know why because I usually try to keep up with this stuff. I mean, I think that's just how it is these days. Like, the big games like these that just are overnight successes, I just don't give two craps about, or I just don't pay any attention because there's so many games that are out these days that it, these things just slip through the cracks. And also, I think it's by who you know. I don't follow any big-time streamers or big-time YouTubers that probably play these games and talk about it, and these all these nerds come together all these sweaty nerds, and they just discuss that this game's going to be cool. Hey, guys, it's going to be a big hit. And usually streamers are the ones that get these games big to begin with, just like with Players Unknown Battleground, fucking PUBG, man. That was that game was only popular because of streamers. And that... Not because the mechanics were fucking on key and just perfecto. No, that game was technically a buggy-ass mess that somehow it still got a lot of people's... on a lot of people's good side. Um... But then you got Call of Duty Warzone, and that pretty much eliminates that. But Valheim is one of those overnight successes, guys. It is... We're talking about right now. Valheim appears to have Steam's biggest ever launch for a survival game. Bigger than Rust, guys. Oh my goodness gracious. So Valheim is already nearly the biggest survival game ever on Steam, and it's not even a Fortnite old. Uh, they don't, they act like they know what that means. They're like, eh, it's just Fortnite, because Fortnite, you know, is spelled different, but it's still Fortnite. You know, gotta gotta reference something that I know about Pointney. On February 14th, Valheim hit an all-time peak of 36. Th oh my God, 367k players on Steam. Barely two weeks following its February 2nd release, compared to the most popular survival game on Steam. By the way, this is an early access game. Just want to let you know that this makes it the fastest-growing game in the genre ever. Its key genre rivals Rust and Ark Survival Evolve cannot boast such a high number of concurrence in their entire lifetimes and only hit comparable peaks years after launch. Yeah, uh, those games take a, took a while to build back up because they were in early access for the longest fucking time. And they were probably shit when they came out. The only barrier to Valheim claiming to the crown of most concurrent players of a survival game ever is the all-time high held by Terraria, which is still boggles my mind, which hit... 489,000 players in May 2020. It should be noted that this was a short and unusual spike caused by the announcement and launch of Terraria's final ever update. On a normal day, Terraria pulls in around 30 to 50,000 players, with its prior highest peak occurring on June 29, 2015, with 159k players. As such, Valheim is already bigger than Terraria has been for almost all of its lifetime. Unbelievable. 
For a better comparison, look at the two survival games that stay almost cemented near the top of Steam's most played list, Rust and Ark. Despite launching early access in 2014, Rust only hit more than 100,000 as recently as March 2020. Ark had a much faster trajectory after launching in June uh, 2015. That's a typo right there. It's just 2105. Good job, IJ and your professionals. Proofread your fucking work. Pieces of shit. Liar. Stop right there, criminal. Uh-oh, retard alert. Retard alert, class. It hit over 100,000 concurrent players in January 2017. Ark's all-time peak is 157,000, which it hit in March 2020. Rust, meanwhile, hit an all-time peak of 245,000 in January 2021. This puts Valheim's growth far ahead of his genre competition and more in line with the viral explosion of players on a player unknown's battleground. But even PUBG, which launched in March 2017, took three months to hit more than Valheim's current high of uh, simultaneous players. With a then high of 382,000 concurrent pl back to on July 10th, 2017. Uh, don't worry about that. Absolutely mind-boggling, my friends. So, what is Valheim? It is a Viking survival game. That's literally as best as I can... It's an open sandbox survival game. You build stuff. You pull a Minecraft. You pull a Rust. You build boats, towns, equipment... You go out hunting, surviving, crafting, all this stuff, teaming up with your buds, having a great time, adventuring out in the Viking world in, in Vinland. I don't think it's Vinland, but it, it looks, it's got a neat art style to it. It's supposed to be an art style that people can just handle on all their computers. That's the best way to make the most money. Uh, it's a very neatly stylized game, and it's only 20 bucks. It is an all, is only a $20 game, and it's early access, and people are still... Uh, not still. People are fucking hooked onto this game. They cannot stop playing this game, and it's only early access. I have to stress that, guys. Early access is a lot of times hit or miss. And sometimes when games go into early access, they stay in early access for way too long. They get too comfortable. You know, it's their... Uh, like... Rust and Ark and the Long Dark stayed in early access for a very, very long time. And it only took so many years for it to not be early access. It's or get out of early access. It's actually it's these people. You know, you get complacent, and it's just like your good old cop out reasoning for not getting everything done. You just take your sweet time. And some people are like that. I completely understand. You want the best experience, but you know, people are going to be bored with your game by the time it officially comes out with a 1.0. Because then you got games like Valheim are going to take over, or Among Us, or Call of Duty Warzone. You know. Now everybody wants to wait for that. But Rust, on the other hand, had a huge spike in January. So, you know, what do I know? But this is crazy. Uh, I might... I know one of these days I will probably play this game, but I just don't... Ha I, I don't want to right now because it's a game that requires a lot of time and, and effort. And I don't want to focus on this type of game right now. I just don't. Because I'm playing Yakuza. I'm playing WoW. You know, playing Dark Souls 3. And I got my sights on Neo 2, you know. Uh... You know, and so on and so forth, pretty much. Still playing Cyberpunk. That's enough stuff. And then, like I said before, White Knight Chronicles on the weekends. Is, yeah, that's how it is. But one day, I will come to this. Maybe when it's not in early access. <laughs> Whatever that'll be. So that's Valheim for you. I check it out. If you want to play a game with your friends, building all this stuff, crafting, hunting, survival, whatever, as a Viking. Okay. Now, this I thought was pretty interesting. Uh, Zelda remake studio Grezzo is hiring for a new medieval and stylish project. So, Grezzo has worked on remakes, remasters of Link's Awakening, Ocarina of Time, and Jorah's Mask. Those are the guys who re-released our favorite Zelda games and make them better. And they do a damn good job. And I kind of hope they do that for Link to the Past. It'd be awesome. Um, Link's Awakening was a very well-stylized game. I loved everything about it. It was a ton of fun. That game has such great character and personality and charm. It's a beautiful game. Uh, Ocarina of Time 3D and Majora's Mask 3D are fantastic as well. They're just better versions of already fantastic Zelda games. Although, I like Ocarina of Time more than Majora's Mask because I hate the stupid 3 day system and the moon crash into the planet. Then kaboom! Boss, get this guy off me! Exactly. So, uh, Grezzo, the Japanese game development studio known for such games as the Switch remake of Link's Awakening and the 3DS versions of Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask, is hiring for a new medieval and stylish project. And you know how I feel when it comes to medieval and medieval type games and stuff. I get super excited. 
As spotted by Nintendo Everything verified by IGN Japan, there are currently three job openings, one programmer and two designers, and they tease that Grezzo is looking to develop a game that won't necessarily be photorealistic, but aims to have a stylish take on reality. I hope it not, has nothing to do with the fucking pandemic, somehow. <laughs> Even though it says medieval. Besides the previously mentioned Zelda games, Grezzo also worked on Legend of Zelda Four Swords Anniversary Edition, Triforce Heroes, Street Pass Garden, the 3DS version of Luigi's Mansion. Wow, they got some pretty damn good titles. All these games they release are pretty good. The studio has also developed two games, Arc of Alchemist and the Alliance Alive HD Rematch that wasn't exclusive to a Nintendo platform, also appeared on PS4. Um, in 2017, Grezzo released an original IP known as Ever Oasis. Okay, whatever, it's just talking about their... There's not much to go on here, but I just thought it was interesting because I... I don't know. if This picture looks pretty cool if it's supposed to be... Whoa. If it's supposed to be tied into what they're working on. Maybe they'll make a really cool, uh, like a Final Fantasy S game or Dragon Quest. Maybe Grezzo's making their own fucking IP, guys. Because they've been. Here's the thing. A lot of the times when these companies work on remakes and remasters, eventually they want to make their own game themselves. And I think that's fantastic. I, I hope they do that stuff. Um, Bioware was like that in the beginning, working on Baldur's Gate and Star Wars, and then they made Jade Empire and Mass Effect and Dragon Age. Uh, we don't mention Anthem. But. Uh, you know, companies, they work with stuff that people know in the beginning to get get a head start on this game development side of things. And then they want to go and make their own stuff. That's why I liked Obsidian, because Obsidian, you know, made a Star Wars game, but then they started making their own stuff. You know, it didn't take them too long to make their own stuff. But that's a company that know, knows how to make fucking great games, no matter if it's working on an already established franchise like South Park or Star Wars. Or if it's like Pillars of Eternity, oof, or The Outer Worlds. I mean, shoot, let's not forget Fallout New Vegas. One of the best games, role-playing games ever made. And it's night, and it was a Bethesda-titled game. Oh, God. Obsidian just knows how to do their shit well, man. Despite that game being rushed out of development. Unfortunately, KOTOR 2 didn't have the same luck. You know, KOTOR 2 is missing a lot of stuff, unfortunately, because they only had a year. But now it's great if you have the restored, uh, restored mod content. So make sure to download that if you're on Steam. Use the Steam Workshop. I'm telling you, it's worth it. Play that game again. It's so fun. Although Nar is still kind of a shitty place. For, it's the worst of all the game's cut content. And if you don't do something right, oh my god, it'll piss you off. Because the, the way this, the quests flow in that, on that planet, if you have to do it, you have to do it a certain way or else you're fucked, man. And that's because of the cut content crap. Anyway, so I'm excited. I really do hope it's another... Maybe it's another like Zelda-like game where it is medieval. Uh, third person, maybe. Maybe it's top-down like Link's Awakening. You go around adventuring. They got their own hero this time around. I kind of hope that they do that. Or they make a fucking, I don't know, just banging-ass JRPG of some kind. Who knows? But this would be fun to see. All right. Now, speaking of JRPGs and... My boys working on Aodin Chronicles. I hope I said that right. These guys, these are the guys who originally made, well, yeah, originally made Sweet Coden. At least for the most part, Sweet Coden 1 and 2. You got the head honchos who did such a fantastic fucking job making those games. You know, I think they got people from all over working on uh if i think they have some people work that came from sweet code in five or four working on the game but they got the head honchos the 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 uh the father figures the the god almighties who got sweet coding even a to be, for it to become a thing sweet code in one and two was you know thanks to these guys and now those gurus those badass game developers those japanese geniuses are working on the spiritual successor to sweet Coden called aodin chronicle absolutely amazing it's called aodin chronicle 100 heroes and this game is no no way in shape or form uh, another fucking jrpg in the mill no way dude this was one of the like sweet coding was the franchise that made you not made you but it had so many party members to find they were all awesome in their own way uh over 100 party members to find and then they had you could transfer all your saved data from from two uh from one to two to three to four or five and it was just like this endless storyline. It was awesome. And Sweet Coden 1 and 2 are just classic, classic role-playing games on the PlayStation. I recommend you guys checking that out big time. You are missing out. 
anybody will defend Sweet Coden 2 and take it to their grave because that game is a fucking masterpiece. Anyway, so this is just saying it's going to be published by 505 Games. Promises even higher quality. So 505 Games is a publisher. They did recently Bloodstained. Um, yeah, Bloodstained, Curse of the Moon, and then Ritual of the Night. Uh, 505 Games is... I don't know how good of a publisher they are, but they tend to publish these these Kickstarter games. They like going for the underdogs. I can I can already tell by that because these guys know when they see gold because they know these developers are fucking iconic, legendary developers, man. Especially you know you got guys like publishing uh, Bloodstain, the guy who made uh, Castlevania. Uh, that guy is a fucking genius when it comes to that stuff. And Bloodstain is such a great, great spiritual successor to Castlevania. And then you got um, then you got Aodian Chronicles. So, um, will be published by 505 Games with the developers promising even higher quality as a resor- result of the partnership. Which is great. 505 is like, damn, this shit looks great. The publisher revealed its partnership with Rabbit and Bear Studios and a YouTube video publisher earlier this week. Studio lead... Yoshitaka Murayama thanks fans for their support, adding with this partnership, I believe that we can deliver Aodin Chronicle to our fans, following the original concept with even higher quality standards. Now, hear me out on this. So this game was supposed to come out in 2022, I believe, but don't be surprised, now they got the financial success and the help, the resources that they needed to get things speeding up, hopefully at a, at a nice, healthy, steady pace, Maybe this game will come out sooner than we think. Now that they got the ball rolling. Because, you know, Kickstarter stuff, there's only so many people working on it. And it's expensive stuff. I believe that we can deliver Aiden Chronicle to our fans following the original concept. Oh, yeah. Uh, okay. Murayama also said that Aiden Chronicles Chronicle was the first of hopefully many games the team wished to bring to fans around the world. Which would be badass. People have been jonesing for another game like this. Uh, Aodun Chronicle benefited from an extremely successful Kickstarter campaign in 2020 where it surpassed its goal in one day and became the third most successful Kickstarter video game raising over $4.5 million. <sighs> oh my god. That's amazing. As for what players can expect from the game, a press release notes that it will feature a traditional six-character battle system utilizing painstakingly created two painstakingly created 2D sprites and gorgeous 3D backgrounds with a deep and inter- intricate story written by master storyteller Moriyama. That guy, I mean, the the, sto- the original storyline from uh, Sweet Coden actually came from this Japanese novel. I forget what it was called. But um, it's, it's, let's see if we can find it real quick. Hold on a second. Um, original storybook. Let's see here. Uh, okay, so it's, ba- it's loosely based on the classical Chinese novel Water Mar- Margin, which Talis rendered as Sweet Coden. So, there you go. So, water margin. It is... But it's loosely. Loosely. It's not just straight off the fucking, like, page, word-for-word type deal. Like, these guys are being careful. So, uh, as for what players can expect from the game, uh, traditional six-player character battle system, uh, two-day sprites, um, Aodin Chronicle is a JRPG with a 2.5D visual style, which I love to death. I love 2.5D. You could still... Make it a beautifully beautiful, sprited game with some great backgrounds, too, if you know what you're doing. Featuring over 100 heroes to recruit, as alluded to the game's title. Uh, Raven and Bear has said that it chose 505 as a publisher due to its work on PC releases of Bloodstain, Ritual of the Night, yeah, that's right, and Death Stranding. The team at Raven and Bear is stocked full of veteran Japanese developers with credits on games like Sweet Coden, Wild Arms, Tales of, and Castlevania. How fucking cool is that? AODN was originally planned for PC, but after meeting st- stretch goals in the Kickstarter campaign, consoles were unlocked. Yes, I would love to play this game on fucking console. Oh my god. And it's thought that the game will land on PS5, Xbox Series X, and Nintendo Switch, or Switch successor when it's ready. As for a potential release window, fans will have to wait. Mur- Murayama noted that Rabbit and Bear will be publishing more information via the game's official social channels. But this is good news, guys. Like I said, they got the resources. They got the partnership. This stuff can be sped along. They don't have to play... Um, they don't have to worry about starving themselves any longer than they need to because now they got the funds to keep feeding themselves. Uh, it'd be amazing. You'd be, you'd be amazed on how much that really, really helps developers is having a partnership with somebody else that wants you to get your shit going. you know. And uh, they trust 505 because they've seen how well they treat these other com- uh, games and stuff. So that's great. So give a round of applause for these guys. 
That's right. Editing Chronicles. My man. Man, I, I can't wait till this comes out. The gameplay teaser is fantastic, guys. So I, I'm not going to play it here. Uh, but you guys should definitely check it out for sure. It's only 20 seconds. Uh, that gives you a great idea, though. Now, let's see here. Um, oh, uh, this is talking about Halo. I actually don't really care about this. Okay. So, guys, G4 has, is making a return. If you guys haven't noticed, G4 was the place where nerds would go to, to talk about all things video games related. Or nerd culture, whatever the heck. That was the place for nerds to go, though. And it got canned almost 10 years ago. Or even 10 years ago. It, no. Close to it. It's almost been a decade. But now, G4 has announced that Adam Schlesler and Kevin Pereira are officially returning to G4 and will be hosting the revivals of X-Play and Attack of the Show! Holy crap! Oh! Oh, God. What is it? Sarah? Oh, my God. Sarah Underwood, oh my goodness. Oh my gosh. And Candace Daly, oh my goodness. If, they, if those two ladies come back, oh my goodness, I'm going to be happy because those were two. Uh, Candace Bailey. Candace Bailey and Sarah Underwood, those were some beautiful women. Woo! But anyway, Kevin Pereira, I actually like. He, he's a pretty cool guy on, on the show. And Adam Sessler, yeah, he looks a bit of kind of like a stiff. But he's. But Adam Sessler. I gotta give the man credit. He has been there for so long for G4. He has been doing this for a very long time. And he seems like a well, you know, well to do guy. You know, he doesn't seem like, you know, he's just. He seems a little eccentric type of guy. But um, from what I've seen, I have no problem with him, you know. But anyway, so. Uh, while G4 originally confirmed that x and Attack of the Show would be returning, this is the first official confirmation of Cesar and Pereira rejoining the network. Like, oh my god, I can't fucking wait, man. I, you know what, it's gonna be shown on TV again, but I really hope they have an app where you can download it and watch this stuff. This stuff was so, this channel, I'm telling you people, this stuff was so great. They would just show game trailers, talk about video games coming out, developer interviews, like anything that you wanted. Like, all the stuff you see on IGN, you would see that on G4. Uh, beginning with its first teaser from last year, since then he has brought back Crazy Adam to launch. Yes, see, Crazy Adam. I wasn't wrong. To launch hashtag G4 needs talent and Besner sets during the holidays. He even did a game review for Cyberpunk 2077. And the new version of x Play Setzer will review games while inviting guests from across gaming to talk about the industry at large. Yes, that's a big deal. Um, so, Kevin Pereira or uh, Colonel... Duck Buckets is also making his return to Attack of the Show, in which he was originally ca original cast member. G4 has also teased there is no word from his former co-host, though one of Pereira's co-hosts, Olivia Munn, was reportedly in talks to return to G4. Yeah, Olivia Munn is... I, I didn't mind her uh, that much either. I thought she was pretty nice. Um, wait. Olivia Munn, right? Uh, hold on. Who else am I... No, I'm thinking of... Crap, it's this chick on the left. This chick on the left is fucking crazy. <laughs> she looks like she's going to rip your cock off. Like, no joke. But I guess this is the reunion right here. Which, it's going to be... It's going to be great, you know? It's going to be a lot of fun. I'm sure these guys are just... They were probably really sad that G4 was shut down and now it's brought back. Absolutely crazy. So, um, I'm really excited to see this stuff go on and just... Can't wait to check this stuff out. It's going to be cool. G4 was a big part of gaming culture. And I used to... I didn't even know they existed until maybe at the uh, 2010 uh, period. That's pretty cool. Okay, so for this last one, uh, I'm going to bring this up for you guys right on the fly. Let's let's just talk about this. Let's go. This is the last thing I'm going to talk about. What are you doing? Yep, exactly. So actually, Goku, get, me, get us hyped. What he doing? is to go even further beyond okay thanks goku all right blizzcon 2021 it's happening it was supposed to happen last year but it didn't but now it's happening in an online blizzcon type thing yay because you know how much fun that is it's really fucking boring like the bethesda online conference was so bad it was a laughing stock stop right there criminal liar it was doo-doo pie guys it was it was terrible, terrible as in like uh, there was just no new games announced. 
it was really short and everything that they showed was just like DLC stuff. Yeah, really fucking cool. So, gaming fans are fanatical, but Blizzard Games fans are truly hardcore. The fan base for the many popular gaming franchises of Blizzard Entertainment is not only huge, but these folks take their gaming seriously. Yeah, it's pretty sweaty. That's why Blizzard holds its occasional BlizzCon fan events to celebrate both their games and the fan communities have formed around them. However, due to the coronavirus outbreak, Blizzard is holding its mostly annual BlizzCon 21 2021 event completely online. It's calling this year's BlizzCon Line, and it's promises to not have only a ton of news and announcements from the developer, but also some great opportunities for fans to get together to discuss lore, show off some cosplay, and much more. So, BlizzCon. BlizzCon is this, this giant collaboration place where all Blizzard... It's their own thing, kind of like QuakeCon. Um, and all they do is talk about the, the games they're making and the games that have come out and, you know, release news about that. So the reason why I'm bringing this up because I am excited to see Diablo 4 right here, okay? I don't care about Overwatch 2. I don't care about Diablo Mortal. I don't care about World of Warcraft. It's all about Diablo 4. And Diablo needed... Uh, oh, my God, dude. It needs a fucking breath of fresh air. It needs a comeback. Because Diablo 3 was very upsetting, very disappointing. Jay Wilson was the laughing stock. The auction house was the Jay Wilson approved. And every and so on and, every, and and everything else with it. Not even Reaper, despite how cool Reaper of Souls was story-wise, that game, Diablo 3, was just fucked from the start. No matter what they tried to do to make it interesting, it just, it just didn't have that original experience that you got from the first two games. It was just missing its fucking soul and heart. It did not have either of those. Besides Reaper of Souls, like I said. But, yeah, it was absolutely ridiculous. And, that, and you know, Diablo 4 is taking them a long-ass time to release, like they apparently have to do with every Diablo game these days. Diablo 2 to 3 took them a long-ass time. Diablo 4 is no stranger to long waits. But hear me out, guys. Diablo 4 already looks to be on the right path to... Redemption. Oh my goodness. You gotta watch the early gameplay stuff. I know that stuff is obviously gonna be subject to change because it's alpha. But hear me out on this. An alpha already looks better than Diablo 3. It, 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 to me it does. It's got that it's got that gritty, grim, dark fantasy look, that scariness that you needed. And just everything else that reminded us how great Diablo 1 and 2 were, Diablo 4 is trying to get that back. As long as it doesn't just force itself to just stress too much about it. It's really not hard to not make toony ass looking characters like Diablo 3 did, which it was like a fucking World of Warcraft throw up pile into a game in terms of like its animation. And now Diablo 4 looks to go back to its serious roots and make it look actually realistic and fucking awesome. So this is the best part. I'm going to Miami to visit my brother this weekend and we're going to fucking just watch this and nerd out and sweat hard. Uh, about anything Diablo 4 related. It's going to be awesome. I cannot stress this enough. If you guys are huge Diablo fans, I would definitely check this out. Come make, Give Diablo and Blizzard another shot. Give them a second chance. I know Diablo 3 was pretty heart-wrenching. It pulled kind of like how Anthem was or Mass Effect Andromeda, but hear me out, guys. This is going to be great. And uh, I, hope, I hope it does well. I really do. But anyway, guys, I have been your host, Nico the Legend. This has been fun going back to our roots. I feel like Nico is getting back his roots. Wow, what a what a great to oh. Sorry, spoilers. So good good stuff is ahead of us, guys. Now I'm gonna make this pencil spencil. Spencil! I need a spencil, please! Can anybody sharpen a spencil? Hey, you got a spencil? <laughs> Stupid. So I uh, the suspense has been killing me, guys. But there was a special announcement I was going to make to you guys. Okay. Real quick. Nico the Legend. When I reached 800 subscribers on YouTube. If anybody's listening to this. Come check out the Nico the Legend channel on YouTube. It's literally spelled Nico the Legend. All one word. Give me a shot. Check me out. Check out the channel. You'll find all the other episodes of the Nico show on here. But that's going to change once we reach 800 subscribers. And here's why. Or here's what's changing. I'm sorry. Nico... The legend is going to separate itself from the Nico show. So what that means is that the Nico show is going to have its own channel. Okay, I, it, I don't, I like, I want to say that the typical answer. Oh, it took me a long time to think about it, but you know what? It didn't take me that long. It was kind of like a like, yeah, that sounds like a good idea because the Nico, Nico the Legend channel. Look, I loved offering different ways of enjoying my channel, 
with news news related stuff, let's plays and the podcast episodes and whatever else random that comes out of my ass posted on the channel. But I'm done with doing Let's Plays on the channel. We just recently finished Link's Awakening and Luigi's Mansion. Thank God. Round of applause. Right. We can dance, right? And then um, the channel is doing pretty good these days. Almost 800 in less than two months. It's fantastic. Uh, I can't wait to get there. And I'm, I'm just thinking I'm just going to make this channel just news related only for the most part. The only thing that's not going to have is the Let's Plays and the Nico Show. So I want to do the Nico Show on its own thing because I don't want Nico, the Nico Show to be overshadowed by these news videos, okay? Because they're completely unrelated, okay? A lot of my stuff you'll see is talking about Mass Effect. That's just because that's the stuff that's been working mostly for my channel. That's been helping me a lot. But I don't want the Nico Show to be overshadowed by that. I want the Nico Show to stand on its own two feet. <clears throat> I think people know it enough by now on the channel, at least I hope to um, be like, okay, I want to support Nico in this type of fashion. I want to go see him on this other platform. And I know splitting channels is kind of a rough and tumble thing. It splits the audience, and I don't want that entirely, but that's just the, I got to take the hit to give a hit, and I'm going to do that. The Nico show will be its own thing, but that's only once we reach 800 subscribers. So with your guys' help, we can make that dream come alive. And all it is, it's just a, it's just a channel hop. It's just one channel hop away. And when we reach 800 subscribers, I will make a video talking all about it, uh, just to remind people, for sure. But for anybody who's listened to this episode of the Nico Show, you are in luck, and you get to you get to prepare yourselves a lot sooner than later. But yeah, guys, I have been Nico the Legend, the One Matter Teenager, the Snowflake, and the Rambling Idiot, and this has been another episode, and it has been great. I've had a great time. Uh, once again, this is not streamed at all. You won't find this on Twitch, but you will see this uploaded on YouTube later today or whenever, as soon as possible. And then you will see it on Spotify and Libsyn. Those are the podcast platforms. And like I said, guys, help me out here. Help me reach that 800 subscribers. You guys can make it happen. So it's been fun being your host, guys. And it's good to just go back to our roots a little bit here. It's been, it's been good fun. So I'll see you guys later, Pathfinders. And please, please... God Almighty, just look at Miranda's butt one more time.